About this, I'd love to know how you stay focused, Hempoli. I have the issue that I can't keep a focus for more than a week before I need to back off, and the next time I get back to developing, I need to spend half a week refamiliarizing to the code bit. Yeah, that, that is a problem that I struggled with quite a bit. Uh, for me, I've, I've identified kind of three or four factors that have affected my ability to concentrate. Uh, First of which is just getting older. It's, it's been easier for me to concentrate as I've gotten older. Uh, my attention span has improved just kind of, I guess, naturally. Uh, the second thing is that, uh, well, I've learned methods to keep myself interest, more interested in a project or like break down a project into pieces that are easier to tackle. So for example, to-do lists are super duper valuable for me uh, as a way of motivating myself, because one of the one big thing that I le I've learned about motivation is that uh, you can't rely on motivation. If you are making a game, and if your goal in making the game is to make something not just for yourself, but something that you actually want to release and other people to play, you are going to have times when you don't feel like working on it, and uh, you, like you can't you can't rely on the development being fun throughout. Baba Isu was almost throughout fun. Like Baba Isu was really, really unique in that sense. But usually uh, there will be stuff that's annoying to implement and so on. And kind of accepting that and trying to find ways to hack at it when you are not motivated has been super crucial for me. I learned a bunch of about that from uh, Niklas Nugren, the developer of Knut and uh, Unglet and uh, a bunch of other really cool games. Uh, also, I've learned methods to, uh, like other methods to keep myself, uh, to keep my, keep myself kind of grounded into the project or like keep myself thinking about the project or concentrated on a project, one of which is actually streaming. Uh, I don't really... Lately, I've been doing more like random streaming, like streaming video, just playing games and playing with uh, the crew, Melanie Pepon and the others, uh, random games. But first and foremost, for me, streaming is a way for me to concentrate on making games. And uh, hello, Gonzo Games. And uh, for me, Spending about three to five hours working on a game every week uh, with the at least illusion that I have an audience is enormously helpful because it means that I can't just, just start procrastinating. Obviously, I do find ways to procrastinate anyway, like when people talk to me about stuff like right now, uh, I really enjoy going, going on to tang tangents and talking about random stuff that I find interesting, but I don't think that's really a problem in the same way that watching endless YouTube videos would be a problem for my motivation if I like let myself just procrastinate on random stuff. So the fact that, for example, ESA2, I have to admit, I've said this before, ESA2 is not a game that I have a lot of motivation for anymore. I, I, I've spent so much time working on it that my kind of internal desire to work on it is extremely low uh, most of the time, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And uh, the way I manage to keep still working on it is because I work on it every week. I have a stream day, obviously for, for the past, past, like previous month, I didn't stream for most of the month uh, any ESA2 development because I was feeling bad, uh, but having that kind of schedule, having that kind of a situation where I feel like, okay, I have now eyes on me, I can't just slack, uh, has been enormously helpful for me personally. Uh, there is one more thing uh, about how I... Uh, yeah, So, and the final thing that comes to mind when it comes to staying motivated is that in the past, a huge issue for me personally was that... Uh, that when you think about a game project that you are not currently working on or that you haven't started development on, it's very easy to get that kind of like the grass is greener on the other side of the fence situation where 
you start thinking about the project that you are not working on and you your mind obviously jumps immediately to the cool stuff in that project like the stuff that that you are excited about the, the reasons why you want to make the project in the first place and uh your mind won't stop usually it probably depends on the person but for me at least it's very easy to forget about the path path like the route from now to those cool things where it's kind of like okay i'm thinking about this cool idea i have the cool idea has these cool things and then actually there's like a metric ton of stuff that I would need to also implement before I can even start working on those cool things. But it's easy to forget that. It's fun to dream about projects. It's fun to think about like, oh yeah, I would love to make that kind of thing. Yeah, that's it, it's good to be so cool. And in the past, usually this kind of thinking led me easily on the route of like losing motivation of my edgy existing projects because I was kind of like, Oh, I, I so want to work on those cooler things that I have in my mind right now instead of working on these boring things that I'm doing currently. Uh, and uh, so it was easy for me to say that, okay, I'll I'll stop working on this existing project or I'll, I'll return to it. I never return to it. And then work on, start work on the big, cool project I had in mind and then get hit with the truth that, okay, before I get to those cool things, I'll have to do that metric ton of other metric ton of other stuff and then lose motivation on that as well. But because I had, maybe because I had mentally already kind of given up, given up on the other project, it's kind of hard to pick it up either, uh, usually. So when I was making, for example, environmental station alpha one, uh, I spent several months during the development, just not working on the game at all because I was, I was demotivated about something. I was working on a boss and I didn't want to work on the boss. And I worked on some other random stuff on the side. But Environmental Station Alpha was very inform like uh, important for me also in the sense that it was the time when I actually managed to come back to the project where kind of like a, the pull of the project was high enough that I didn't give up on it, unlike other projects. And there's actually an old article on a little website that is little used nowadays. Uh, that talks about the concept called uh, known as big game fever, or I think big game fever is the name the article writer gave to it, which is exactly this kind of thing where you start dreaming about a cool big project that you want to implement and uh, lose sight of your existing project or become disappointed of your existing project because you start concentrating so much on the on the like dream thing in in the distant past a uh, distant past distant future and so it's like a big game fever is something that i i really like as a term because it's a it's a fun fun ter fun phrase to say uh and also it, it like describes my previous issues really well where it's kind of like oh yeah i love this that huge project that it's going to be so cool and then it's it's just way too ambitious and i give up my existing projects and go work on it and uh, it doesn't work out uh, and one more thing that came to mind uh when it comes to motivating myself uh is that mm, when i I've, I've noticed kind of a pattern where every success in actually finishing up a project helps me uh, helps me get motivated or like helps me prove to myself that I can do it. Uh, so as I mentioned, Environmental Station Alpha 1 was a huge important moment for me because it was kind of a proof it was, it was proof to myself that I can finish a large project. And I feel that after ESA 1, it has become increasingly easier to concentrate on a singular project at a given time. And I would say that partially it's all of those other things that I already mentioned. But I would also imagine that some of it is that I now have proof that I can do it, that I can finish a large project. So when I start working on a larger project, and I could, I might worry that can I actually get this done? Am I going to run out of motivation and just burn out? Uh, I can tell myself, well, I managed to do it in the past. 
maybe I will manage to do it this time as well. Uh, so I would say that kind of like, not just life experience of getting older, but also experience of, uh, experience of successes, getting something done, seeing that I got that done can be very powerful as a way of, uh, kind of teaching yourself what to do or how, how to keep working at things. But yeah, sorry about the lecture, but uh, this is something that I pondered about a lot, so I thought I would just lay out the entire thing. There's actually an article uh, article I wrote on my blog about motivation, which it's, mo it's mostly everything that I just said here. But if you're interested, there's a, uh, there's a link of me uh, pondering a couple of years ago in 2020 about like, these things, these reasons why I feel that I'm better at motivating myself. 